When I was young, my parents cheated on each other and were just a facade of a married couple. It was my current husband who taught me how to love, as I had completely lost any desire to marry. But he too was cheating on me. Why? I would never do anything to make you sad. That's what he told me. Does everyone ultimately betray others? The person who saved me when I was about to give up on everything was someone I never expected. My name is Lily, 28 years old. I grew up with a domineering father, a totally submissive mother, and a kind brother. On the surface, we were a happy family, but both of my parents were having affairs. We weren't short on money, but I felt lonely growing up in a completely hands-off household. In contrast, my brother was very kind and always took care of me, so I wouldn't feel lonely. I'm truly grateful to him. Growing up with such parents, I had no desire to marry. I thought I would just end up being betrayed if I got married. Even if I had kids, they would just end up feeling sorry for themselves, like I did. For several years after entering the workforce, I focused solely on my job without any romantic involvement. I thought my job would be my only love, but it was my current husband who supported me. His name is Kevin, and he's 32. We met at a mixer I was reluctantly dragged to. I was quietly drinking at one end of the table, while he was the life of the party, making everyone laugh. The day after the mixer, Kevin started contacting me frequently. Of course, I had no intention of dating him and had just exchanged contact information out of politeness. So at first, I responded coldly, but he persisted. Honestly, expressing his feelings. I know you're not interested in dating, but I just can't help wanting to spend my life with you. Don't say things like that so easily. I really don't think about marriage because of my parents. I understand you can't trust someone, but I'm not your parents. I'm me. I know, but anyway, I'm not giving up. I'm confident I can make you happy. That's irresponsible. I'm serious. I would never do anything to make you sad. You're responding to me because you know staying like this isn't good, right? He was absolutely right. Indeed, I couldn't have a positive image of marriage. But on the other hand, it was also true that I felt envious seeing people around me getting married. So I started dating him, somewhat swept up by the momentum. After a year and a half of dating, we finally got married. There was another reason I decided to marry him. It was his son. Kevin was divorced and had a six-year-old son, Sean, with his ex-wife. The reason for their divorce was his ex-wife's affair. That's why he deeply understood and tried to understand my feelings. Sean, who didn't have a mother. Quickly became attached to me when I started dating Kevin. Just recently, this happened. Sean, is there anything you want for dinner tonight? Anything is fine. Everything you make is delicious, Mom. Huh? Sean, did you just call me Mom? I've always wanted to call you that. Hope that was okay. Of course it is. I'm really happy. Just think of me as your real son, okay? Of course, thank you, Sean. He acknowledged me as his mother, even though we're not related by blood. Life with my kind husband and adorable son was very happy, but that happiness didn't last long. One day, when I got home early from work, I found Sean sitting at the front door. He always carries a key and should have been able to get in by himself. Thinking this, I hurried over to him. Sean, what's wrong? Why are you sitting here, Mom? You'll catch a cold. It's cold out here. Let's go inside. But he pointed to a pair of shoes at the entrance. What? Today, school let out early. 
When I got home, I saw these shoes, and I heard a woman's voice I didn't know in the living room, and I got scared. I saw a pair of unfamiliar woman's shoes. I tiptoed alone towards the living room. Peeking through the door gap, I saw my husband getting cozy with a woman I didn't recognize. I quietly took pictures as evidence and quickly left the house. Sean looked at me worriedly and spoke. Mom, are you okay? You look unwell. I'm, I'm fine. It seems like one of Dad's friends came over. His friend? Yes. So it would be bad to interrupt them. Let's go out for dinner tonight. Okay. Then I want a hamburger. All right. Let's go right away. I left the place as quickly as I could, desperate not to let my son know what was happening. On the way to the restaurant, I kept up light conversation to avoid worrying him, but I couldn't shake off the scene I had just witnessed. I remembered what my husband had once said. I would never do anything to make you sad. He had promised me that. So why did this happen? I thought I would be safe with him. In the end, I was betrayed not only by my parents but also by my husband. While we were eating at the restaurant, tears welled up in my eyes, and sensing something, Sean spoke up. "Mom, are you okay?" "Uh, I'm here for you, Mom. I'll grow up quickly and protect you." "Oh, Sean." "So wait a little longer. I'll become a strong and cool man." Thank you, Sean. I'm looking forward to it. I don't need anything else as long as he's with me. Just being able to watch him grow up calling me mom is enough for me. I decided to keep our family going for his sake. Ten years later, time had flown by, and little Sean was now a high school student. I will become a strong and cool man. He had declared this, and true to his word, he worked hard in both his studies and sports. Thanks to his efforts, he got into the top theology school in the area with excellent grades. Before I knew it, he had grown taller than me and was taking on a more mature air. Meanwhile, my husband Kevin probably continued his affairs. Perhaps as a form of atonement, his extravagant declarations of love had become more excessive than before we were married. Good morning, sweet Lily. I love you so much. Thanks. Um, what time will you be home today? I'll probably have to work late again. I think it'll be after midnight. No need to wait up for me, okay? Okay, got it. For years now, my husband had been increasingly absent from home, claiming late work or business trips. Even when he came home late, he wouldn't eat or even take a bath, but would go straight to bed, faintly smelling of soap. During this time, I continued to gather evidence of his infidelity. I checked his computer, and the receipts he left around whenever he was away from home. Gradually, I learned more about his mistress. Honestly, I was in a favorable position if it came to divorce. My only concern was Sean, who had been showing signs of deep thought or worry ever since he started high school. Sean, what's wrong? You're hardly eating. Oh, just thinking about something. I'll make sure to eat. Are you feeling okay? You've been studying hard too. I'm really fine. Hey, mom, dad said he's working late tonight, right? Uh huh, that's right. Why? How about we go out to eat together, just the two of us? It's been a while. <laughs> That sounds lovely. Let's go out for dinner tonight. He was a high school student. Likely dealing with his own issues, I decided not to pry and give him space. That night, we met up after work and headed to our favorite Italian restaurant. We were both excited for our rare dinner out, but as we peeked into the restaurant from outside, we saw something unbelievable. Dad, Mom, look. What? It was Kevin sitting with a woman, enjoying a meal, just the two of them. I recognized her. She was the woman I saw with him in our living room ten years ago. He was still involved with her. 
and to think they would come to this restaurant we often visited as a family? Stunned, I was pulled away by Sean to a nearby cafe. Once we settled down, he began to speak. Mom, I'm sorry. I knew. You did? You mean you. Yeah, that dad has been cheating since I was in elementary school. You knew since elementary school? I tried so hard to keep it from you. Do you remember ten years ago? When I was sitting at the front door? I somehow understood what he was doing was wrong, even as a kid. Sean. But seeing you trying so hard to smile and act normal, I just couldn't bring myself to say anything after that. Oh, sweetie. I had no idea he knew about his father's affairs all this time. I made him endure so much. Suddenly, overwhelmed with guilt, I immediately apologized. Sean, I'm so sorry. I didn't divorce him because I didn't want to lose you. You don't have to apologize. Sean slammed his hand on the table. I care about you too, Mom. That's why I've been thinking about what I can do. I made up my mind when I started middle school. Made up your mind? When you turn 15, you can decide which parent to live with in case of a divorce. So I thought I'd keep things as they are until I was in high school. Sean, you thought that far ahead? I want to protect you, Mom. You've always taken care of me. That's why I can't forgive Dad. Mom, will you fight this with me? At that moment, my resolve for revenge solidified. For ten years, I had turned a blind eye to the truth, but my son reignited my resolve. With his determined gaze, I knew... Together, we can overcome anything. Even though we're not related by blood, I had legally adopted him so I could stand in a custody battle. With more than enough evidence of infidelity, I was certain we could get a divorce. We didn't need a man like that. Together, Sean and I planned our revenge. Three months later, an opportunity arose. My husband was going away on a four-day business trip. As he left the house, he threw his usual exaggerated words of love. Lily, honey, I'm off then. Have a safe trip. Don't work too hard. Thanks. Oh, I wish this wasn't a business trip. i love to go on a trip with you, just the two of us, spending more time together. Well, let's work. What can you do? Have a safe trip. Relax a bit while I'm gone, okay? See you. I had already hired a detective to investigate his actions. This business trip was actually a cover for another affair. As soon as he left the house, Sean and I started packing together. We packed all of Kevin's belongings and sent them to his parents' house. Then, we moved to a new apartment we had previously arranged. In the car on the way to our new home, Sean spoke up. Hey, Mom, are you really okay with me coming with you? What are you talking about now? I've been enduring Kevin's cheating all this time because I didn't want to be apart from you. But wouldn't you be better off without me around? Don't be silly. I've been working hard all this time for you, Sean. We promised to get revenge on that man together, remember? Yeah, you're right. Let's make him pay. After we finished moving and unpacking, we decided to wait for Kevin to return. Two days later, he came back from his affair trip and called me frantic. Lily, what the hell did you do? What do you mean? Don't play dumb. You sent all my stuff to my parents' house, didn't you? They called, overwhelmed with boxes. Oh, they arrived safely then. You know, the apartment we lived in was in my name. I decided to move out, so I had your crap sent to your parents' place. Why would you say that? Why? Because I'm ending our marriage. What? He seemed bewildered by my cold attitude. Stammering, he tried to appeal to me. Why are you doing this? I've been working hard for our family all this time. For our family? How dare you lie like that? I know you've been cheating on me. What are you talking about? I haven't been... Don't you dare play dumb with me. I realized I was shouting. 
How could you have an affair with another woman when you have Sean? You promised never to make me sad, and yet you've been cheating for ten years. What kind of nerve do you have? How did you? I've been gathering evidence of your affair since I became sure of it ten years ago. Sean has been helping me. We're so getting a divorce. Wait, please. I never intended to. I was disgusted that even in this situation, he was only thinking of himself. I yelled at him. Shut up! I don't need you in my life anymore. Sean is all I need. Don't ever contact me or my son again. I'll make sure to get a hefty alimony from you. Just go and drown in debt with your mistress. Rotten hell, you jerk! Lily, wait. Sean then snatched the phone from me and lashed out at his father. Don't you ever call us again, you cheater! Sean, wait. I、oh, just shut up. I'm going to live with mom. You're no father to me. Stay away from us forever. He hung up the phone with force. That's how we finally severed ties with Kevin. I immediately went to a lawyer's office to proceed with a divorce. A month later, the divorce was finalized. We managed to claim a large amount in alimony from my ex-husband and his mistress. Apparently, the mistress was all married and ended up being sued for alimony by her own husband. My ex-husband, having spent most of his savings on her, had to take out loans to pay the alimony. In the end, the mistress left him, choosing to rebuild her life with her husband. He was truly alone now. We blocked his number and didn't give him our new address, so there's no chance of meeting again. Now Sean and I live peaceful days together. Watching him grow every day, he's become very dependable, giving me much relief. Mom, I'll make dinner tonight. Really? You can cook? I learned in home economics at school, so yeah, I got this. All right, I'll let you take over. I'll make the best meatloaf. Some day the time will come when Sean and I part ways. Until then, I plan to cherish every moment of our life together.